After weeks of hating myself, I press on, for you, to watch another episode of The Crapolite. A show that had some real promise for about four minutes until it completely crapped the bed. It was a good run. On this episode, we're back with the two sisters, worlds apart, trying to find each other, and perhaps themselves once again. Mm, powerful stuff. I, I really don't even know what the point of this show is, but I'm going to talk about it once again right now. This is going to be a spoiler-filled breakdown video, so abandon ship if you don't want anything ruined. And if you are sticking around, please feel free to hit that subscribe button below this video. It really helps me out, shows that you care, and this way you won't miss a single Crapolite breakdown video, a movie review, rants, live streams, all movies every week here. We start this riveting episode with Osha awaking from her slumber. If that sounds awfully familiar, that's because it's both awful and familiar. There have been like eight scenes that start this way. The Force is female? Nah. The Force is falling asleep. We find these two gals in a parent trap situation of sorts. May's pretending to be her sister Osha, off with Master Soul. Meanwhile, we have Osha stranded on an unknown planet. Literally called Unknown Planet. But each scene of this episode is about 30 seconds long. We don't have time to waste. We're back on Kofar. And the gang's all here. Actually, most of the gang is dead. Th those that are alive are abandoning the planet. They're taken off. Master Squid Game informs a hologram that most of the Jedi died during this little confrontation. Short for confrontation. He's heading back home. May, in disguise as Osha, heads up to the deck to assassinate Master Soul. Good thing he's a Jedi and he can sense this stuff. He can sense danger a mile away. I've seen Jedi sense thing planets away, galaxies away. So obviously any threat that's right behind him is going to be recognized instantaneously. There's no way he's going to miss a beat with this. And of course he doesn't know she's coming. He is completely in the weeds on this. The Jedi in this show are absolute trash bags. They're really giving the prequel Jedi a run for their money. Okay, what we have here, my friends, is what I assume is a rejected character from the Star Wars Holiday Special, trying to puzzle together whether or not this Osha is actually Osha at all. Back on the unknown planet, budget Ezra Miller goes for a dip. Pops the T, pops the P, he's going all in. Sun's out, bun's out. And Osha's into it. Now, she wants to kill him. As an aside, this actress is looking damn good in that outfit. It's like the equivalent of Star Wars Nike attire. It's very sporty, it looks very comfortable. I can see the slogan now, Nike's the acolyte. Just don't do it. These two have a bit of a chat, and Osha decides not to fire at him after all. He informs Osha that he didn't in fact kill two people that she kind of liked, so she decides to spare him. She's not going to go at him. Meanwhile, fake Osha docks a ship into its butt plug and then receives an unexpected hug from a grieving Jedi. Meanwhile, Martian Manhater is having a conversation with what seems to be the human equivalent of Beavis or Butthead. I can't decide where to fall on this thing. He informs her of the Jedi's failure on Kofar. Osha and Mose Eisley Miller continue their chat. He is incredibly chillaxed. He informs her that any point she can dip out. There's a plane off yonder. It's going to take a day's swim to get there, so you better go now before sunset. And then, yeah, you can you can leave the planet. They kind of give me an odd angle, though, when he says that this is a good swim out. Because from the vantage point I'm getting here, it looks like it's just over a couple wave crests. Really no more than uh, a five-minute swim. I'm pretty sure I could pick a pebble up and toss it hitting the plane from the beach. Hell, Bob Hope could jump that distance in his golf cart. Road trip reference. Subscribe. She takes a look, but then she weighs the pros and the cons. The cons being she's not going to eat for a while and she has a rumbly in her tumbly. So she's going to head with Mos Eisley Miller, see what he's got cooking up for dinner. Rocket Raccoon's inbred cousin is either attempting to attack fake Osha right now or dry hump her into oblivion. In either case, it's now the only way I can achieve climax. And he didn't even buy her dinner first. He fails, but she does receive something out of the deal. Her sister's Game Boy Advanced. Isley Miller is making some toilet wine as he talks about how stupid the Jedi are. This is one thing we truly agree on. She turns down the porridge, but I have a feeling he's going to win over Goldilocks before this is all said and done. He needs to find the porridge that's just right. Before she leaves, though, he reminds her she has unfinished business. He wants her to penetrate him with her saber before she goes. And I realize how that sounded. 
Osha gets pissed. Which is really hard to tell, because her expression remains the same no matter what emotion she's feeling. Martian Manhater is once again chatting with Beavis and or Butthead. This scene lasts for all of five seconds. May, who is barely even trying to play her sister, manages to continue tricking Soul. Yes, he's grieving, but you're a Jedi for fuck's sake. Have some dignity. Finally, Master Squid Game comes to his senses. He takes May from behind. I mean, he stuns her with his blaster. That came out wrong again. This all happens in front of that ugly CG abortion of a creature creation. Oh my god, we have some more time with Beavis and Butthead. Isley Miller is fixing up his gimp mask while Osha takes a nice peek at his uh, tramp stamp. Hot. Sexy. He wants her to try on his helmet because it can block lightsaber attacks and really let her concentrate on the force. And I'm sorry, but it's happening. I'm officially shipping these two. Do people still say shipping? Stupid phrase to begin with, but uh... Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm shipping them. Now back on Kofar, because 20 seconds have gone by, the Jedi are doing a field trip of their dead friends. Oh no, another bug thing is coming! Those were threatening never. Luckily for them, Martian Manhater has her trusty purple lightsaber whip. And she no-scopes it, winds it back up, and puts it away. This is a weapon that only she possesses and will never show up again in the franchise. Good. That's good. I love that consistency. Thank you, Disney. I love what you've done with my franchise! Truth be told, that doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> like, if you want to have a bunch of crazy weaponry and stuff, great, cool. Just make it look fun and interesting and engaging and, well, no, we're not doing any of that either. That's the problem. Whew. Has it been 30 seconds already? Back on Unknown Planet, OSHA's trying on the GIMP mask? Wow, it took all of a afternoon of convincing to get her to put on a Sith mask. I will say, though, she looks pretty damn awesome in it. That is a sweet looking helmet. Hot damn, I'm joking. That's the dumbest fucking thing I've ever seen. And thankfully, that's the end of the episode. She's going to the dark side. Tune in next week, friends, when May decides to fight with the Jedi instead of against them. As Osha continues her fall into darkness, the sisters have switched sides fully. It is a Freaky Friday situation. It is parent trap. But I have a feeling that when this thing winds down, these two are going to reject where they ended up and they're going to come together once more, forming a new type of Jedi or Sith. Something new, something gray. Maybe a Jith or a Sedai. I'm workshopping these ideas, okay? I'm working here! And I believe Disney's still workshopping things as well. And none of it's really turning out very good. But I will be here next week with another episode of The Crapolite. Let me know where you're at. Was this as boring for you as it was for me? Have you lost any excitement for Star Wars? Because that's where I've been for several years. Let me know in the comments below. Please like and subscribe to the channel. I post these every week. Plus a bevy of other stuff that's far more interesting than this crap. But I'm going where it's popular. And right now people enjoy me talking about this show. You keep watching. I'll keep watching. All right, hopefully I see you next time. May the Force be forgotten for a couple years until we rework everything internally. Take care.